Hello, welcome back to BioClass Bytes. In this video, we are going to talk about human impacts on ecosystems. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. So this is the last lesson for this unit on interaction and interdependence, how human activities affect the natural ecosystem. So these are just some of the many human impacts on ecosystems, okay? pollution, habitat degradation and fragmentation, ecosystem simplification, genetic resistance, predator elimination, introduction of non-native species, over-harvesting renewable resources, and interference with ecological systems. So I will be recommending um, a lot of videos for you to watch that will emphasize how human activities greatly and negatively impact a balanced ecosystem. So this one is the threat of invasive species from TED Ed. I'll provide the link in the description below. This one is how activi human, human activities that threaten biodiversity. Okay, so I'll provide the link in the description below. Kindly watch all these videos, very, very important. And I also recommend that you visit this page in the online library entitled Ecological Problems. So that is where all of this will be thoroughly discussed okay, by the reports of my previous students. So you can access all that. They also have um, infographics, they have videos, they have news articles. So you can access all of those. Um, I'll provide the link in the description below. So the best way for us to see how big of a of how big uh, human impacts are in the environment is to just observe our ecological footprint. So we define ecological footprint as the measurement of a population's demand uh, for the ecosystem just to sur just to supply their resources that they need and the services that they acquire. So for this is um, a visualization of a carb uh, ecological footprint. Okay, we're in to, just to supply the needs of this community. They need this big uh, fishing ground. They need this area for cropland. They need this area for grazing of animals, uh, for slaughter. Um, they also uh, use the resources from the forest um, and then also yun, remaining forest lands. So according to United Nations Environmental Program, we define ecological footprint as, again, the measure of area, okay, um, productive land and water that a population uses with current technology to generate the resources it consumes, okay? As well as, the, as, well as uh, what's needed to absorb its waste. So ecological footprint is what we take from the environment just to sustain our um, survival, our, even our lifestyle, okay? Um, I also recommend that you visit this Global Footprint Network, this website, wherein they will discuss everything about ecological footprint I'll provide the link in the description below. Also, this video from National Geographic Channel, Human Footprint, um, um, more vis visualization on the different um, uh, ways by which we harvest uh, resources from um, the environment. So again, the link in the description below. So um, if you still remember our lesson um, in interaction of um, uh, different spheres, okay, sphere interactions of the earth. So you can actually see that most of the most of the time, these sphere interactions are also influenced by human activities, much to the um, destruction of the environment. So for example, atmosphere and biosphere. So the interaction of that, including the human activity, you know, uh, earth system interaction influenced by human activities. So. Um, uh, the biosphere and polar le region has already been contaminated by industrial pollutants from other continents. So imagine that um, the industrial pollutants have reached the polar regions. Um, dam building and control of rivers also affect the ecosystem in the rivers and biodiversity of the rivers. Water pollutants from waste disposal of industrial sewage, effluents, and rubbish also affect uh, and greatly threaten the biodiversity of those organisms. Um, oil spills pose to uh, continue to pose a threat to aquatic and marine ecosystems, and so much more. So this one is um, from Global Footprint Network. It shows us the world ecological footprint by land type. Okay? So these are the uh, footprint. This is the ecological footprint that we have um, acquired 
by land. So, much of those would be for carbon, okay? Then, uh, fishing grounds, okay, we have acquired that. Um, then, cropland, so this is the level. Um, and then, built up land, forest products, okay? And then, for grazing, land. So, it's quite alarming that as time goes by from 1961, our ecological footprint by land type, has been increasing, steadily increasing up to this level. So that's, this is around four years ago. So from 1961 to 2016, um, uh, from, from let's say 0 0.75 um, number of Earths to 1.5 number of Earths, that's the number, uh, that's the visualization of how much environmental um, products we have already consumed and we have already utilized. So this one is from our world data. So this is the cumulative uh, carbon dioxide emissions by world region. So this shows us um, uh, emissions by based on uh, emissions based on territories. Okay. So um, so this is um, as the as the year go, years go by, and then the percentage of um, emissions. Okay. So from 19 uh, for for European Union, okay, there's possibly around 28. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is U European Union. I'm not sure of the 28 here. So from 100% in 19 uh, in 1751, there's this decrease in um, emissions. So uh, um, just above uh, just above 20% for EU, okay, European Union. Other parts of Europe also there's this decrease decrease in carbon dioxide emissions. United States is still in this region, still quite high. 100% of global emissions um, still comes from Asia and other and Pacific. Okay, China is the second most um, uh, country with the most uh, carbon dioxide emission, followed by India, Africa, Middle East, and um, Americas. You can actually uh, visit our world in our world in data for more information such as this one. This one is cumulative um, carbon dioxide emissions by as of 2017. Okay, so this um, this is the total sum of carbon dioxide emissions produced from fossil fuels and cement since 1751. Okay, so as you can see, the 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 lighter colors or lighter light colored countries they have the least amount of carbon dioxide emissions. 50 million tons to 500 million tons. So countries such as Africa, even the, even the Philippines is somewhere somewhere in the middle. Okay, um, this is Greenland. Okay, but the countries with the most number of emissions, uh, the darker ones, uh, darker colored um, countries. So 250 billion to 450 400 billion tons. So you have here your United States, Russia, China. Okay, so they are, these are the major countries that emit the most uh, carbon dioxide. Who has contributed most to global carbon dioxide emissions for North America? That's United States, okay? EU, okay? European Union, okay? followed by Russia. Then for Asia, it's mostly China and Japan. Okay? The Philippines is so small, it's, it's cannot, it can't be seen anymore. So these are the major regions of the world that um, contribute to global carbon dioxide emissions. U.S., Euro European Union, China, and uh, Japan, and then India also. Russia is also here, okay? So, um, to learn more about ecological footprint and uh, what we call the overshoot of our um, uh, eco ecological overshoot, I recommend that you visit this uh, article from National Geographic. We've consumed more than the Earth can produce uh, this year. So this was from 2015. I'll provide the link in the description below. Then the Global Foot Footprint Network also have what they call the Earth Overshoot Day. So that's the time of the year wherein we have consumed our budget for ecological resources. So last year, 2019, by July 29, we have consumed our we have consumed what what um, we will need for the entire year just halfway through the year. So by July 29, we have consumed uh, everything that we will need. So every uh, so from July 30 onwards, all of those are considered 
overshoot or beyond what the environment can provide. Okay, so we are continuously acquiring more than what the environment can provide. So I'll provide the, the link to this article in the description below. So this is still from, uh, this is from uh, Global Footprint Network, wherein they try to, um, they try to map out the Earth Overshoot Day or the day we have exceeded the, the, bud, the budget for natural resources for that year. So from 1971, okay, so the Earth over, 1971 to 2019, our Overshoot Day continuously rises, okay? So... It means that um, as, early, uh, as early as August, okay, for 2019, we have already consumed uh, what we will need for the entire year. So August, um, August 2 onwards are considered overshoot. We have consumed more than what the Earth can provide for that year. Okay, so this has only been steadily rising um, as time goes by. Okay. Now, um. Climate change, environmental problems, ecological problems is, is a topic that's very dear to me. And if you're interested, I recommend that you visit my lecture. This is actually for grade 12 DRRM, Disaster um, Readiness and Risk Reduction subject. Um, and we're in, um, I gave this lecture about the ethics of climate change, right? So if you're interested, and this was also a talk I gave to University of Makati um, in 2019. So if you're interested, Kindly visit this um, lecture, kindly browse through it. I'll provide the link in the description. You can ac actually access the link in the PDF, lecture PDF of this video. Now, this is for reflect your reflective journal log. So, this one is actually quite, you know, easy to understand, but I still want you to um, reflect on it and see what it means and if this is really what's happening in the world right now. So that ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye.